Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do another AP practice problem. This one is on uh, particle motion, and uh, this is again something that uh, typically appears on AP tests in this format. So let's take a look at the problem. It says a particle moves along the x-axis with velocity given by v of t equals... 10 times sine of 0.3t squared, all divided by t squared minus t plus 2, for the time interval where t is between 0 and 4.5. The particle is at position x equals negative 3 at time t equals 0. This is pretty important for us to pay attention to because this right here is telling us that we have an initial value. Okay, so let's move on and take a look at what uh, what else we got going on here. Uh, for part A, it says find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 4. Okay, so at time t equals 4, we want the acceleration. We're given a velocity. The derivative of the velocity is the acceleration. So what we want to do is we want to put this into our calculators. And... The best way to do this, and I've shown you this before, is um, unfortunately I can't, in this app, I can't bring up the calculator, uh, the visual of it. But what you want to do, um, if I get a chance, maybe I can edit that in, but we'll see. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to Y1, and then you want to put this equation in. And be careful when you put the equation in. Um, <clears throat> I would suggest maybe putting the top in parentheses, so open parentheses 10 sine, open parentheses, 0.3t squared, and then divided by, open the parentheses, t squared minus t plus 2, like that. This will be your y1, and you're going to refer to this every time by using the feature. You're going to hit vars on your calculator, and then you're going to hit y vars, And then you're going to choose the one that will be Y1. And that saves you a lot of time from having to go through and put the equation in every time you want to do something. So we're going to put that equation in Y1 right now. So you can go ahead and pause the video and do that. And then we're going to come back to the problem. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the derivative feature in our calculator. And we're using all of this because it says calculator is required. So I want to try to maximize the use of my calculator. So I put y1 in and now I'm going to use the feature that's n derivative. So n derivative and you can get to that by hitting the math and then scrolling down. And then we're going to say n derivative of y1. Now if you have the newer calculators obviously it's going to uh, show you the derivative. It'll say d with respect to x which is what you're going to have to put in. It'll have like a box here. Uh, if you have the newer software on your calculator, then it'll open up parentheses. It'll have a box here. And this is where you put your Y1. <clears throat> and then it'll have this. And it'll say X equals. And it'll have a box. So these are the points where you want to put the Y1 in here. And then at time T equals 4 right there. So that's what you want to do. So entering these values into our calculator, we will result in v prime of 4, which is our a of 4, and that comes out to be 0 0.50572, and they don't give us units on here, so we're just going to say units per second squared, since that's an acceleration. Actually, it's 0 .507, 0 0.50577. Okay. Uh, moving on to part B. Find the position of the particle at time e t equals 4. So for the position, we're going to need s of t. So our position is s of t. Uh, or you can call it x of t. That's fine. It doesn't matter. And here's what we're looking at. To get the position given a velocity, we have to integrate the velocity. That's how we find the position. So we're going to take our velocity and integrate that, but don't forget, we are given an initial position plus the initial position. So we have to add this initial value that we were given at time t equals 0. So what we have here is we have the integral from 0 to 4 of v of t <clears throat> dt plus this negative 3. 
this right here, again, you're going to put in y1. So we're going to use the feature FNINT. So you're going to go math on the calculator, then FNINT, and uh, you'll get on your calculator, it'll give you the integral sign. It'll have a box here, box there, like this. And it'll say D with a box. So obviously you're going to put in here 0 to 4 Y1, right? And we this the way we access Y1 is we're going to say VARS, Y VARS, and then choose the Y1 option. Okay, so when you do that, <clears throat> and then you're going to add the negative 3, you will get, and I'm doing it on my calculator right now, I will get a value for the integral that comes out to be 3.925202 plus the negative 3. So that means S of T comes out to be 0 0.925202 units. All right, moving on to the next part of this question. And it says evaluate... The integral from 0 to 4.5 V of t dt and evaluate the integral from 0 to 4.5 of the absolute value of V of t dt and interpret the meaning of each integral in the context of the problem. Okay, so when I integrate, and we just did this above uh, in that problem right there, when I took this integral, I found the displacement. So the integral from 0 to 4.5 V of t dt gives me my displacement, which is my position, right, where I am. And I'm going to put this in the calculator. Again, you're going to do the y1. You have your equation y1. That's the beauty of putting this in once, and then we can just continue to use it over and over. And we want to do this at t equals 4.5 because that's what the integral is. So this gives us um, 3.6960. That's our position, our displacement. Okay, so then let's. what does the other one mean? Well, let me use a different color here. And um, let's use the green one. I know Ashlyn always wonders what color I'm going to use. Okay, so <clears throat> we have 0 to 4.5 V of T dt. So now, let's take a look. How does this, and my cousin wants me to use this lightsaber as the pointer. So there you go. Shout out to you, Ramsey. All right, over here, what does this differ than that when I put these absolute values right here? How does this make it dif different? Well, what this means up here was a displacement of position. When I use the absolute values, that is going to be a total distance traveled. So you can think of it as if I take three steps forward and one step back, where am I? I'm at, if I started at zero, took three steps forward, one step back, I'm at a position of two. How far have I traveled? Well, I traveled forward three and I traveled backwards one. I've traveled total four steps. So that's the difference when we do the absolute value. It tells us how far did we really go, the total distance traveled. And on your calculator, you can put this in directly. So we're going to use the absolute feature on our calculator. So what we can do is we're going to, again, do... FNINT, right? And then we'll do the integral from 0 to 4.5. And then you can get these by hitting math and then the ABS button, and it'll give you the absolute values. And we'll put in V of T. In this case, it'll be our Y1. This is where we're putting in that Y1, so I don't have to write it all over again. And with respect to x, right, dt, and this gives me, at 4.5 seconds, a total distance traveled of 4.96109. And these are units that didn't indicate in the problem. Now, another way to do it is you could find out 
where the velocity graph, since you have a V of t, where it crosses the axis and break it up and take the absolute value of the second part. So it crosses the axis. If you graph these, you'll see that it crosses at uh, 3.23604. And then you could do your V of t dt. And then plus, and this is where you take the absolute value. You can take the absolute value of the whole thing, 3.23604 to 4.5 of V of t <coughs> dt. Because this answer this answer will end up being a negative. So then what you're going to do, the absolute value will bring you back to a positive. All right, so let's move on. For part D, it says a second particle moves along the x-axis with position given by x2 of t equals t squared minus t for that time. At what two times are the particles moving at the same velocity? We want the same velocity. Well, how do I get the same velocity? Well, that means I need to take the derivative of this. This second position derivative gives me the velocity of the second one. So, and I want to set this equal, so I need this derivative to be the velocity of that first of the first equation. And we know this first equation because we put it in as y1. The derivative here is just 2t minus 1, right? 2t minus 1, that's a derivative. We want to know when these two are equal. Well, the easiest way to do this is to solve graphically. So I'm going to uh, graph each one, and when you graph each one on your calculators, you'll get your uh, v of t function, and this is, you just graph the y1, and you'll get that function that looks kind of like this. It goes up, it comes back down, and goes up a little bit again. And then the second one, you'll get something that goes like this. I think uh, I missed it. It's more like this. It crosses somewhere like right around here, I believe. Okay, and you're just going to use the uh, intersection feature on your calculator. Second calculate intersection. And when you get that, you will get a value of t equaling 1.69415 seconds. So this problem wasn't too bad. Sometimes the interpretations and the meanings and so, so these extra things they throw may throw you for a loop, but just break the problem down and ask yourself, what are they asking me to do? What do I have to try to find? And then just go step by step from what you've been taught all year to solve this problem. So hopefully that helped, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll post up more videos on uh, questions that are similar to what you'll see on the AP test. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and see you in the next video. Well, cool.